is Wednesday night against Atalanta the biggest game for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I said it was the biggest game against Leicester, and now it's, I think it is. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer cannot afford anything but a win against Atalanta on Wednesday. With the pressure that he's currently under, with the way that things are going, even if the club is coming out and saying that he is 100% safe, the wrong results and performances against Atalanta and Liverpool, I personally think that changes. So he needs a win. Who is he going to put in that starting eleven to get that win? This video, I'm going to run through my predicted starting eleven for the game, my preferred starting eleven for the game. I'm going to have that debate with you as well in the comments. Now you leave your team, watch this video, and you let me know what you think about the team. I believe Solskjaer will start in, as I said, is probably the most important game of his managerial career. Now, we all know the problem against Leicester. <clears throat> well, it wasn't just one problem. But the biggest problem against Leicester was our defence. It was, it was shocking. And that's being polite. Harry Maguire clearly not fit to start that game. A huge error of judgment from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to play, a, by the looks of it, a 40, maybe 50% fit Harry Maguire. Over 100% fit Eric Bai. It backfired, blew up in his face. He cannot afford to make that mistake again. So I'm looking at this as my back five. I'm looking at De Gea with Shaw and wan with a back two of Lindelof and Bai, which is what it should have been, really, against Leicester, but it just wasn't. wan has obviously had his uh, red card appeal upheld, so the second part of his ban, because he was banned for two games originally, is, no, it doesn't, doesn't count. He's, he's available tonight, and I'll take him. He's available against Atalanta, and we need him, seeing as how bad the lot was against Villarreal. Now, Shaw hasn't hit the heights of last season yet, but I'm still not worried about that. I think Shaw and Rashford, once that partnership builds again, I think Shaw will continue to improve. Now, it's a centre-back where we can have conversations. Rafael Varane's definitely not going to be fit here. Harry Maguire clearly wasn't fit against Leicester, and it was a massive, massive issue that he started. Do you think either of them are going to start this game? I don't think either of them will or should. It should be Lindelof and Bai. I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if Bai feel, it feels really... Disappointed, I suppose, in Solskjaer after being overlooked for that game against Leicester when Harry Maguire clearly was so much, just so unfit. So Bayern must be thinking, right, you'd rather have like a 40% fit Maguire than a 100% fit me. That's disappointing. That's being polite. Lindelof and Bayern is a much better centre-back partnership backup option for Manchester United than it was last year when we kept switching between Lindelof and Bayern and Twanzebe and anyone else who dropped in there. That's a really decent backup partnership. Lindelof, I still maintain, is a good defender. Much better passing out from the back than most most of the United's defenders. By, I just I fear for, we all fear for the hot head moment, and we just we hope that does not come against Atalanta because we need calmness, we need possession, we need the United to do that and to be able to survive the press. It's very easy to make our defense panic. You just press against them. Basically, the opposite of what our front four normally do. That's because of Ronaldo, right? But I would play that back five. And of course, of course, of course, the biggest questions, as they have been every single game this season, are in midfield for United. Now, before I do move on to talk about the midfield, I want to shout out One Football. Big up to you guys for sponsoring and helping United People's TV during October and November. If you haven't already, I've said this before, it's, it's such an easy integration to do because I genuinely use the One Football app. The best place for all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, match build up. Ahead of the game against Atalanta on Wednesday night, go over there. All the press conference reaction from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. There is so many good things about the app, but the best thing is it's free. So there's a link in the description. You can head over there, download it, support One Football, support United People's TV, do what you can. But big up to One Football for sponsoring this video. And as I said, download the app. But we've got to talk about again. We have this conversation every week, really, don't we? We've got to talk about the midfield and the midfield issues we've got at United. We knew it going into the season and we know it even more so now. Man United's midfield was always going to be the problem this year. Now, I was really surprised, if I'm being completely honest, by how Man United and Matic and Pogba played against Leicester. That's the midfield I've been calling for. And we saw the weaknesses of it. Matic, he can't move around. He does screen the defence, does he? I mean, we conceded four there, so if he does screen the defence, he does it badly. Popper, just a severe lack of movement from him. Bruno also kind of missing. Our front four weren't pressing. Our midfield weren't pressing. We were just inviting the pressure onwards. So that's why Fred and McTominay are 100% coming back in for this game. Like them or lump them, they do the basics. Better than Popper and better than Matic can do. 
And right now, United, because of how bad that game was against Leicester, we've got to go back to the basics. And it's going to sound like cliches, and it's not good enough for Manchester United to be going back to these in games like this in the Champions League. But we have to. The work rate just wasn't there against Leicester. The, 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 an actual tenacity in the midfield and tempo and movement and discipline, an actual organised shape just wasn't there against Leicester. None of it. And that's why I think he's definitely going to go back to Freddie McTominay. In these sorts of times, Solskjaer typically has reverted. And after that performance from Matic and Popper, I can't even blame him for reverting here. Obviously, the downfall of McTominay and Fred is, of course, their lack of ability to progress the ball forwards. It didn't really matter much against Leicester because we were just progressing ourselves backwards towards our own goal. That's because we weren't controlling the midfield. And that, for me, is why McTominay and Fred will come in here. Bruno will obviously operate in that number 10 role. And Bruno cannot escape criticism here. No one can. No player at the club, no manager either. Bruno against Leicester, I would say he was quite invisible too. The problem with Bruno is not, it's not a problem. Uh, but the, the problem that stems from Ronaldo being in a team is that one, you, when, you, when you don't press as a collective unit, if there's three of you instead of four of you pressing, there's always a space. There's always a space that the opposition can pass through and get out of the press. The press only works as a collective unit. Now, Bruno, nobody has set that tone better than he has since he joined the club. He's, he's incredible. He really is. But I don't know how he's going to operate really inside this non-pressing system. What he needs to do is drop a little bit deeper and properly link up with that midfield because if we've got the weaknesses and the downfalls of McTominay and Fred, Bruno's going to have to be the person that sweeps up and sort of helps in that regard. So I expect and I hope to see Bruno drop a little bit deeper to sort of dictate play from somewhere, maybe on the halfway line roughly, because he loves operating as a second striker behind Ronaldo. But what's the point of going there? The ball never comes. Now in terms of the front four, I'm going Rashford on the left. I'm going Bruno in the middle, as I said, Greenwood on the right-hand side, and I'm going Ronaldo up front. I want to run through each position with you. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Rashford, I thought he was going to be fit to start against Leicester, and what I saw when he came on against Leicester was that he is 100% fit. Rashford looks very physically fit, very sharp, very able and capable to, boom, come straight back in and score goals straight away. And my, how United need that. We need a boost. And Rashford, sorry. He's definitely going to play on that left-hand side, as far as I am concerned. He needs to... Solskjaer will, as I said, in these moments, will revert to the players he trusts the most. And three of them at United, McTominay, Fred, and Rashford. I think all three of them come back into this starting eleven. I think it'll be Greenwood on the right-hand side. Greenwood against Leicester, not only was it an incredible goal, but he was the only one really sort of running and causing problems at, at the defence. Greenwood... And at a time when we've got Sancho there, we've got Rashford there, the competition is fierce for places. But Greenwood, for me, earns his earns his spot in his starting eleven against Atalanta. I want to see him in that team. Jaden Sancho, maybe he can feel begrudged, but Jaden Sancho, just like right, Rashford came off the bench against Leicester, we can bring Sancho off the bench. Now, Ronaldo up front. Mr. Champions League. And my, do we need him to lead by example on Wednesday night. Solskjaer needs him to lead by example. The problem that we've got with Ronaldo is that he's used to, I've already said this before, I'll say it again, he's used to playing in teams that dominate possession. Your Real Madrid and Juventus. And Manchester United simply don't dominate enough in possession and therefore don't create enough chances for him. A lot of the chances we have are sort of block shots, shots from the edge of the box, not chances we created through slow, patient build-up play, that therefore creates space that Ronaldo can exploit. It's quick, fast moving, counter attacking, quick through the transitions, not really dominant in possession, but quite lethal when it works. And it, when it works, it will work. But what we need to get the most out of Ronaldo here is to actually control the ball more. Really control the ball more, control possession. And Ronaldo will, it doesn't, nobody should be asking Ronaldo to press in this team, man. He didn't press at United back in 2008. That was Rooney and Tevez's job. He didn't press at Real Madrid. That was the likes of Benzema and all the other players who played around him. That was their jobs. Ronaldo's job is to score goals. To hang around the 18-yard box. Goal hang. Score goals. That's what he does better than arguably anybody else that's ever played the game of football. So play towards it. Don't expect him to waste 70% of his tank on chasing the ball down in the press. It won't happen. So Man United have got to. If we're going to play Ronaldo... 
semi move away from that concept of the higher press. We've got to play a little bit differently if we're going to get the most out of Ronaldo because it is an issue. In terms of my preferred 11 rather than this predicted 11, there would be one change I would make and that would be bringing Popper in for Fred in midfield, playing McTominay slightly behind him. That's what I would do. Now, a lot of you would argue, well, I don't know, not that many of you would argue, but you could argue that Fred, we need him in there for sort of a bit more energy uh, in terms of winning the ball back, in terms of interceptions, in terms of breaking up the play of Atalanta. You could argue that, but I, I argue McTominay is capable of doing that. I don't think McTominay, McTominay is capable of doing that role on his own, but in terms of winning the ball back, having that dynamism and presence in midfield, I think McTominay can do that. And then you've got Paul Popper alongside him. Now, Paul Popper was poor against Leicester. I know he was talking about how we need to change, something needs to change. But Popper's attitude needs to change if that game against Leicester is anything to go by. Really poor performance. I'm not isolating him because it's not just him. It was Bruno too. It was every single one of Manchester United's defenders. It was all of our attackers. Man United need to play as a team here against Atalanta. We have been individuals. We know that for a long time. But Solskjaer needs everyone to rally. United need to rally, man. I don't think Solskjaer, well, as we can see from everybody linked with the club, Solskjaer right now is safe in his job. But I think that changes if we don't get the right results and performances against Atalanta and Liverpool. And that, for me, is why this is a must-win game for Solskjaer on Wednesday night. You let me know what you think about that predicted and preferred 11 in the comments. I've got De Gea in goal, back four of Shaw, Lindelof by and wan in midfield of Fred and McTominay. In my predicted 11 with the front four of Rashford, Bruno, Greenwood and Ronaldo. And the only change I would put in my preferred 11 is Pogba in there instead of Fred and switch it so McTominay's playing slightly deeper. Let me know who your starting 11 would be in the comments below. As I said before, make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to United People's TV. And if you would, download the One Football app. The link is in the description. But let me know who you would start in this crucial, crucial game for Solskjaer against Atalanta.